What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to JR Garage and welcome to a very early morning here at the hangar. So today is going to be an awesome day and we are kicking it off with a fun car show. I was thinking, I was like, you know what? What's a car that I haven't driven in a while that would make a statement at the show, be something fun to uh, share with people? And then it hit me. That would be the Lamborghini Murcielago. I know you guys haven't seen this thing on the channel in forever and I just read some comments saying we want more Murcielago videos. So I literally grabbed the car and said, you know what? We're taking it to the car show today. A huge thanks to Need for Speed No Limits for sponsoring today video. I got my cool friends here who all have cool rides. Guys, show me around. A little mini car show before the real car show. Starting off, you guys know this M3. I posted a couple things on Instagram. This is Caden's new whip. Like full bolt-on. It's really fast, really cool car. I used to not like these, but it's actually really nice. Maybe change my opinion. Speaking of a car that I don't like, no, <laughs> just, kidding, just kidding. I love this thing. We got Jordan's GT4 with all of the goodies. One of the high spec ones ever. It's, it's up there. It's got the carbon ceramic brakes, really cool, expensive uh, carbon bucket seats, and he's got a nice exhaust, or at least he did. Did you put it back to stock? Uh, I've done it in race energy. It's still loud. No, okay. like it was before. All right, it's still loud, but just not as crazy as it was before. And then, of course, we got Kieran's whip here with the fresh new supercharger, if you guys didn't know. Oh, nice. Yeah, tint, tint it out so you can be a complete sleeper it's and nobody can see it. Oh, yeah, it just says V10. That's the stock engine. Okay. Yeah, nothing going on under here. That's nothing right. at all. Okay, cold start of the Mercy Lago. You guys want to hear this goodness? It. it has been forever since this car has been on the channel. I'm sorry about that because it is so awesome. I don't know why we've, like, not filmed many videos with it, but uh, here we go. You guys ready for this cold start of a real engine? All right, here we are, guys, in this pristine interior. Remember, it's only 90 400 miles or something like that. Okay, I gotta make sure I get this immobilizer right, otherwise the alarm will go off. All right, do you hit it once or twice? I don't know, it's embarrassing. Like, I go to start it and then the alarm goes off. Let's try that. All right. Oh my, Jesus! Uh, that's what I was saying. Okay, let's try that again. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, this thing looks so good. Woo. Yo, I just got the intro clips here, Entrepreneur YouTube channel. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. There she is, guys. So I'm going to close up the hangar and we will hit the road, get to the car show kind of on time. I don't know if we'll find spots. It's crazy. It's always super packed, but gosh, this thing is gorgeous. And that paint. That triple coat pearl paint, recently polished, looks perfect. Absolutely stunning. One of my favorite paints. This, the orange and the green, best Lamborghini colors. And the motor, fully recently serviced, runs perfect. Bam, that beautiful gated manual. This absolutely makes the car. Before we can head off to the car show, we need to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Need for Speed. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you already know by now that Need for Speed has been making the coolest automotive video games for the past many, many, many years. But what's super cool is they have now brought all that fun and excitement to your fingertips. Yes, you got that right. Their new app, Need for Speed No Limits, is now available on all iOS and Android devices. Be sure to download Need for Speed No Limits today with our special link in the description below and start racing for dominance in this new edition of Need for Speed made just for mobile. No Limits gives you the opportunity to buy, customize, and race your dream cars from manufacturers such as Bugatti, Lamborghini, McLaren, Pagani, Koenigsegg, and more. You have total control over your ride and it's so fun being able to modify them and make them faster and win more races and make more money to be able to buy even crazier cars. To so be playing Need for Speed as a kid you know, dreaming of owning those cars one day to now owning them in person, in real life, is so cool. If you already have the app, be sure to comment down below what cars you have in your custom garage. And if you don't have it yet, be sure to hit that link down below. It's a free app and it lets you compete in thousands of challenging races online. It is so much fun. Guys, check them out, support those who support us. Thank you once again, Need for Speed, for sponsoring today's video. Back to the vlog. to the car show now. I've never actually been to this car show in this location. Let's see if we can get a spot and uh, let's put some smiles on some faces. If I see any fans, you know, let them sit in the car, interact with you guys, always a good time, right? 
Speaking of cool gated manual cars, we got a Ferrari 550. That's a rare find with the really expensive modular wheels. That's not a 575. I know they look very similar. Kind of like our car, but not quite. We got a traffic jam trying to get into the show. Supercars and exotics blocking the intersection and my horrible turning radius here. Oh my gosh, I had all the lanes. Oh my God. Wow, guys, they literally just ran out of spots. Kieran and Kaden got in, but me and Jordan were the last two and we didn't make it. It is what it is. All right, guys, the car gods have blessed us and they somehow created a spot just for us. There they go, the Ferrari 550s. Yep, gated manual. Well, obviously all 550s were gated, but not all 575s, still cool to see. Let's see what's in here. Yep, I knew it. C6 Corvette with a C2 body. That's pretty cool. All right guys, time to depart the car show. That was really, really fun actually. There was at least like 15 to 20 subscribers that were here that I met with and got some pictures and stuff. So glad I was able to bring something special. The Mercy definitely put on some smiles today. All right, let's see if we can do it without the alarm going off this time. Let's not be embarrassing. Okay, let's see, come on baby. Oh my gosh. No! No! Every time! Everybody's staring at me, okay. There we go. Gosh, this immobilizer is the weirdest thing. I don't even know how this thing works. Okay, Mercy always gets quite a few looks, but then when they see the gated manual, everybody freaks out and loves it. Clutch work in the Mercy in slow traffic. Not the easiest thing, but it's actually not that bad. If you just give it some gas and be liberal and let it go and get yourself rolling quick, the car will appreciate that. It doesn't like to be slipped in slow traffic. Yo. <laughs> YouTube and uh, serial entrepreneur, a bunch of different business ventures. What's your name on YouTube? JR Gross, check it out. JR Gross? Yep. Alright, I'm gonna check that out. <laughs> Alright, do so. Alright, see ya. Yeah. Bye. Beautiful car. Thank you. Gosh, those pops. Give me that B10. That's nice, but you only have 5.2 liters, I have 6.2, therefore I'm better than you. You sounds like a vacuum cleaner. You know, you people are getting on my nerves. Hey, 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 it is a little quiet, but I'm working on that. Wait, wait. should Jeffrey straight pipe the Mercy? You Comment heard, down below. You heard it here first, should I straight pipe the Mercy? He says it. I don't know. Leave it a vacuum cleaner or straight pipe that glorious V12? Let us know. Comment down below. There's Kieran talking to this F12 owner. Kieran's saying, that will be my next supercar. Kieran wants an F12 so bad. What do you guys think about F12s? I think for the money, they are a great car. These things straight piped with the dual clutch, they just sound like an F1 car. Such a beautiful car. I think it's definitely on our list too. We'll see who wins. If Kieran gets one first or if we get one first, but what a gorgeous car. Two naturally aspirated V12s. Such a sick sight. All right, y'all, 
we just made it back to the garage. What an exciting morning. Great way to start the morning and it's only like 10 a.m. I would have been just waking up now if it was a normal day, but here, waking up early to get to a car show, highly recommend it. Just gets your day started off right. But I think it's time we address the elephant in the room and that is the dozens if not hundreds of comments and questions I've gotten as to why we're not driving this car? Why are you just parking it? Why are you doing that? You're such horrible Lamborghini owners not driving your car. And uh, yeah, we, we need to talk about it. So let's pull up a chair. My legs are a little tired after all that clutch work. So you are right. You are right if you make the assessment that we are not driving this car enough. That That's true. This is, uh, oh gosh, I hate to say it. Um, my second time driving the car, third time, third time driving the car ever. That's not something I'm too proud of there. But um, because of that, the miles have stayed very low and I hate to be that guy talking about, oh, I wanna keep the miles low on my Lamborghini. But like in this case, with it being such a rare collector's item, every mile does count and it counts for a lot. So like I showed you in the beginning, this car has like 9,460 miles, something like that, 110,000 miles, which is pretty low. Now it's not like a thousand miles, like Garage Queen never ever drive the thing. Like, no, it's not that, but it's also not a 30,000 mile example that you can feel less bad about driving. Like I said, I don't wanna be that guy, but I have to be that guy a little bit, because you guys know I'm very business savvy, very entrepreneurial, my brother and I. Christian would be here, by the way, but he's currently on the East Coast visiting family and friends, so good for him, having a good time. We are both very smart with our money, and we know every time you drive it, technically it loses a little bit of value. So we've been very deliberate with the miles that we put on it. So because of that, we've been just a little cautious with not wanting to drive it a ton. You know, it's gotta be sparingly. And I think the bigger reason is probably because, if you guys remember, we picked this car up a while ago now, but it was just days before that accident happened that Christian was sitting passenger seat in and got a little hurt in. Um, so right after that happened, we didn't drive cars, we didn't touch the cars, we didn't want to go driving them, like nothing. We just wanted to stay away and appreciate like life. And it was great that our buddy Kyle at Highline European had some open spots in his front climate controlled, literally office space. Like it's, it's 75 degrees, air conditioned and everything. So we're like, hey Kyle, can we you know put the car there while you do like all the major servicing with it and changing all the fluids? So he said, sure thing. And it just kind of sat there for a while. It looked really pretty, it was fully clean. A detailer came by and did a full paint correction. I mean, this car is stunning. It is in perfect condition. There is not a scratch on it. The wheels are perfect. That's like the third reason I didn't want to drive this car. There was nothing wrong with it. And I figured, oh, if I drive it, you know, what if I scrape the front lip over a low bump that I don't see? What if somehow, you know, one of the wheels gets damaged, gets a hold of a curb? Obviously we don't do those things and it's very unlikely, but there's still a risk of that stuff happening. And while it looked so perfect, I'm like, oh, I just don't want to drive it. I just want to look at it. And it's true, this thing is a piece of art you could literally just park this thing in your garage, never drive it and be happy as a clam because it's just beautiful. It's drop dead gorgeous. So those are a few reasons and I guess the fourth and fifth reason, this is so bad. Reasons I don't drive my Lamborghini Murcielago. I don't want it to be that video. I'm just explaining some things with you, like real talk. Um, so the fourth thing uh, is because this car was not made for people six foot six. Like I'm six six. Um, that does not work well in a Lamborghini Murcielago. So the seating position is horrible for tall people, super weird and quirky. Like I said, this car is just quirky. Uh, we'll leave it at that. It's an experience to drive, but it's a lot to drive. It just takes a lot of energy, a lot of focus to get this thing from point A to point B. Especially in hot traffic, in 110 degrees, this car doesn't like the heat. Actually, it, it was running nice and cool, so this car does okay in the heat, but like in general, these Lambos just are not a fan of the heat. You know, super low front end, horrible clearance, the turning radius is awful. I mean, it's, it's just a very uh, different kind of car to drive. And no wonder people don't daily drive these things. No wonder you never see them with a lot of miles. I, I do wanna drive it a lot more. I think Christian and I will start to get some more use out of it, unless we sell it. I mean, that brings up like, the fifth point and that is the staggering value and price increase on these 6 speed cars like I mentioned earlier in the video. I don't know if you guys know but in Monterey the last sale of a 6 speed Mercy just two weeks ago and it was a gated 03 Lamborghini Murcielago same thing as this it was the 40th anniversary so you got the special blue paint if that's something you're into it had even more miles it had like 16 or 17 thousand miles guess what it sold for with buyer's premium it sold for four hundred and fifty five thousand dollars what? That is like an astronomical number. You guys get the idea. They're, they're skyrocketing in value, like everything. Cars are going nuts, but these things are going up even faster than most cars. So that's kind of like, what is that? The fifth point? It's like, gosh, when it's worth this much, 
you're a little scared to drive it. Like, what if somebody hits you? What if something happens? Like, you're just a little on edge. And I'm sure we'll get used to that as we get more and more expensive cars. You know, one day a hypercar, one day a Pagani, you know, stuff like that. Now this one's not worth $455,000. You know, it has the accident on the Carfax back in like 2005. So it has a little bit of a history. For somebody looking for a driver or a cheaper one that they can afford, you know, it makes a whole lot of sense. So we'd consider selling it. If you guys are interested, hit our line, jrgarage22 at gmail.com. But until then, until it sells, we'll happily keep enjoying it and you know, getting some great use out of it. Now, while we would consider selling the car, it does mean so much to us. Like this was our dream car from such a young age. I know we say we have a few dream cars, like yeah, the Ferrari F430, the Gallardo, but like this was that era too. So this was like the all time dream car, right? Like 430 and Gallardo were like realistic dream cars, but the Mercy Lago, like that was like the pinnacle, the one day, you know, this was like the hottest car when we were growing up, right? Like five, six, seven, eight years old, this thing was the car, the poster car, the magazine cover car. So I, I'll never forget the day hearing my first Lamborghini Mercy Lago in person. I was probably like eight years old. It could have been like one of the first LP640s or maybe was a first gen. I don't, I don't really remember. All I remember is this V12 ripping down this road, accelerating up to speed. And it was the most glorious sound. That'll just stick with me. Little seven-year-old Jeffrey remembering that sweet sound of that V12. In that moment, I said to myself, I'm like, okay, one day we will have that car and it will be ours and I'll be able to do those own accelerations myself. And we showed that today. We were able to accelerate ourselves in our own Lamborghini Murcielago. So like, ah, just like dreams come true. And uh, you know, it took a lot, of, a lot of work to get here. You know, it all pays off in the end. My favorite motto, work hard, play hard. That's totally what we do. Working all day, 24 seven, all day, every day. I know we've mentioned in the past, but if you don't remember, Christian and I do not do YouTube for a living. We don't do it for the money. We solely do it to have fun and share cool cars and cool videos with you guys. We have real businesses that pay the bills and take up our time, like 80% of our time. YouTube is probably like 20% uh, of our day. And while it would be fun to put that up to like 50% of our time, you know, put more time and effort into YouTube, unfortunately we can't make that move, right? Our business is consuming our time and that's how it has to be. Like something has to pay the bills, something has to pay for cars and planes and all this stuff. And that's our actual entrepreneurial ventures. You know, YouTube still has to be just like the fun hobby, which I, I'm happy it is. Ever since we've started, it has been a heck of a ride and we've been able to acquire some awesome cars like this one, you know, thanks to your guys' support. You guys you guys supporting our crazy ventures is, is what makes it possible. Otherwise, we'd have to be a little more sane and not have all these cars, but with you guys, it makes it possible and a heck of a lot of fun. Oh, and by the way, quick interjection, be sure to follow our TikTok. We just crossed a million followers. Thank you guys so much, but we've been posting a ton of Mercy Lago content. The videos are so funny over there. I always have such a good time creating those. One video I just posted with this has 9.3 million views. So check that one out, follow the page. You guys are awesome. So there you guys have it, a Lamborghini Mercy Lago video. You guys have been asking for it. I hope you enjoyed that little fun mini car show this morning and cruise with some friends. And then of course the real talk, you know, sitting down explaining why we haven't driven this car a whole lot and kind of explain the backstory. Comment down below what you think of the Mercy Lago. Should we keep it? Sorry, jet going overhead. Subscribe to our plane channel. We got lots of videos coming out over there. But uh, comment down below if we should keep it, mod it, straight pipe it, you know, put some miles on it, have fun with it, or if we should sell it to some collector for a ton of money, buy some other projects, or sell it and buy a different Mercy Lago or maybe an LP640 with an e-gear and straight pipe that. That would be music to my ears. So there you guys have it. Thank you for watching once again. Hope you guys have an amazing day.